We had a, a case a few days ago, uh, it was a melanocytic lesion and it caused a little bit of diagnostic confusion. The issue really was the distinction between pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed and a pigmented spitz nevus. Now these two lesions, they certainly do show overlap, but I think they're probably different. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later on. In the meantime, I want to uh, to share with you a case that uh, Antonina Kalmakova let me see, uh, and I also want to acknowledge CSD Healthcare for for sharing their platform. So let's um, let's have a look at this lesion. Now, uh, pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed, and I'll call that reed nevus uh, for, for convenience, uh, is a, I think it's a fairly uncommon lesion, and it presents most often on the extremities, particularly the, the, uh, the upper part of the lower leg, uh, and there's a predilection for females. It obviously may occur at other sites, and it presents as a, a fairly well circumscribed and very dark, uh, flattish papulonodule, perhaps. Uh, the, the important thing is that because of its pigmentation, it may be worrisome clinically either to the patient or to the physician, and they may be concerned for melanoma. So they tend to get excised, and usually, in my experience, they're excised with good margins, uh, which, which is always a help. Now, um, the low power view, which we're looking at now, this is this is a particularly nice example because it really shows you everything that you want to see. It's essentially a flat lesion. It, uh, they're, they're usually junction, although they may be compound. But the junctional ones in particular, that they look as if they're sort of stuck on the skin, a bit like a rather flat seborrheic keratosis. So let's look at this in, in, in higher power now. And uh, you see, that's absolutely beautiful in its textbook. You can see that there's pigmentation in the stratum corneum, in the epidermis. You can see that there are nests of cells that are heavily pigmented. And then there's very marked pigment incontinence in the, uh, in the underlying papillary dermis. And if we look at that at a slightly higher magnification, we can see it in all its in all its glory. Now, um, this one it's hard to be certain that we're looking through the middle of the lesion. Um, there is a nest on that side, and there's a little nest on that side. So, if this was the middle, then I suppose you could say it was circumscribed. But I have a feeling if we got a deeper cut, it would show that feature a lot better. And it certainly looks symmetrical. If we sort of look at the lesion from there across to here, and then fold the two halves across, they would match pretty well exactly. So this is very nicely uh, symmetrical. And as I mentioned, this is a junctional lesion. And you can see that there are quite large nests. Uh, they're composed of somewhat discohesive melanocytes, but you don't see a retraction artifact other than in here, which which may be um, degenerative rather than true retraction. And if we look at higher power again, um, we can see the cells are very uniform. They have elongated fusiform or spindles and nu basophilic nuclei. You can't really make out the cytoplasm properly. All you can see are these uh, fine melanin granules. And if we look at a higher power again, you see the stratum corneum is absolutely full of pigment, as is the epidermis. And uh, you can the other feature that you should notice is 
the population is very, very uniform. All of the cells are spindled. You're not seeing any epithelioid cells. Now, in pigmented Spitz nevus, um, one generally sees uh, a mixture of spindled and epithelioid cells, and you'll also notice the pigmentation is rather eccentric. If I go back to a lower power, you can see the whole thing is pigmented, whereas in a pigmented Spitz, some of the lesion would be pigmented and other bits wouldn't be, and I'll show you an example of a pigmented Spitz later on. Um, sometimes you can see Camino bodies in, in Reed Nevis. The, um, the, the nests of melanocytes, they're often, they often have a rather oval appearance and, and sometimes, but not invariably, they're, they're orientated at 90 degrees to the, to the surface, but that's not an, that's not an, in, an invariable feature. If they're compound, then they'll show maturation with depth. Occasionally, one will see a mitotic figure or, or, or even two, and I don't think that should necessarily worry you, provided all of the other features are, are typical of a reed nevus. And um, sometimes you can see pagetoid spread, and that generally is present in the center of the lesion. So this, therefore, is, I, I think it's a lovely example of a, of a junctional uh, pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed. Now, I'm going to come out of um, the health center platform, and I'm going to show you some cases which Eduardo Colongi from St. John's Hospital for Diseases of the Skin and the Institute of Dermatology in London, Eduardo over the years has very kindly shared with me, oh gosh, probably thousands of cases. Many of these we use for the book, but many of them, many of them weren't. So uh, we'll look at this as a, as a slideshow. I'll just have to get that, get that going. So here is a, a lovely example of a compound reed nevus, and uh, it's very nicely circumscribed. If I just get this arrow, wherever it's gone, there it is. There's the left side, and there is the right side, and the image below shows you the left side at the margin, so you can see this lovely nest at the edge of the lesion on the left and similar you can see a, a nest at the edge on the right. It's interesting that this one does show a retraction artifact so that is certainly a similarity with uh, Spitz nevus. And in the middle we can see the lesion um, is compound there just below is this higher magnification showing you the dermal component with some lymphocytes and uh, melanophages or pigmented macrophages underneath and these two images here show the uniformity of the population they're all spindle cells there aren't any epithelioid cells in sight and the bottom right shows you a mitotic figure there, and you'll notice some Camino bodies uh, towards the top of that nest. So that's a lovely example of a pig, uh, of a compound pigmented spindle cell nevus. And here is another one. I included this one because uh, th this one has been traumatized by the patient and you can see some serum crust and parakeratosis on top. So the patient's been having a jolly good scratch of this lesion. But otherwise it shows exactly the same features. This is a junctional variant. And if we look in the bottom right hand corner, you can again see that the nevus is composed completely of spindle cells. And then this last case, I put this one in because it's a 
pigmented spitz nevus and uh, there's there's the low power lesion there uh, low power view rather it's a uh, it's a very small lesion but what's interesting is the pigmentation is is focal and i mentioned that earlier and this is one of the low power ways of distinguishing a pigmented spitz nevus from a reed nevus and there's a high power view showing lots and lots of pigmentation. But you'll notice the, the, the lesional cells are all epithelioid. And in the bottom right, you can see some very spitzoid multinucleate giant cells. So um, just to, to uh, highlight that these features, pigmented spitz nevus, the pigmentation is focal and the lesional cell population is epithelioid or a mixture of epithelioid and spindle cell. Whereas in reed nevus, the pigmentation is generally uniform throughout and uh, the tumor cell population is pure spindle cell. Now, when you do get a dermal component in a reed nevus, it, the uh, dermal component all seems to extend to the same level, so you get a very characteristic flat lower border. In, uh, in Spitz nevus, very often the dermal component has a wedge-shaped or even pyramidal morphology, so that's another difference. And then lastly, I want to just, if I can get out of this, Lastly, I wanted to show you this abstract, which I thought was jolly useful. It's, uh, it's an article on genomic fusions in pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed from Northwestern University in Chicago. And the bottom line really is that in, a st in their study, 57% uh, of pigmented spindle cell nevi of reed show an NTRK3 fusion. And this contrast with Spitz nevus, in Spitz nevus, um, the lesions may show an HRAS mutation, 15 to 20%. Uh, that they may show various kinase fusions, including ALK at 10%, ROS1 at 17% and NRTK at 16%. So you can see at least in this study, uh, NTRK3 fusions are much more uh, a, a feature of Spitz nevus of reed, uh, or sorry, a pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed compared with, um, pig, with uh, Spitz nevus. So I hope that I hope that will have ironed out any diagnostic difficulties, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much for your for your time.